Welcome back, my fellow manipulators of digital fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn, Dominaria is upon us. With that, Standard has rotated, and I have a bunch of crazy deck ideas that I think are going to be pretty competitive, uh, that I can't wait to uh, build and put on the channel for all you guys. Uh, our first one today, this is our first post-Dominaria new Standard brew. This is Mardu, this is utilizing Paragon, and... We just don't let it die, ever. And then, because it doesn't die, we just bring everything back, ever. So, uh, if you haven't, like this video, subscribe, hit the notification icon so you never miss an upload. Uh, we're really trying to grow the channel. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, we're gonna do a 24-hour stream where everyone in chat can challenge me to games, and if you beat me, I crack a pack, I mail it to you, I can sign it or not sign it, if that's corny, whatever you want. But anyway, Let's check out this deck. All right, so this one's really exciting. We're starting off with four copies of Sarah Paragon. Now, I've seen some people use this in early access and on day one and do some really cool stuff with it, but I don't think anyone's really utilizing it to its full potential. So this is a 3-4 Flying Angel for two white and two, and once during each of your turns, you may either play a land from your graveyard or you may cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from your graveyard. Uh, if you do, it gains when this permanent is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you have to exile it, and then you gain two life. Now, there's a couple things here. First of all, you can get enchantments, artifacts, it's not limited to just creatures. You can even get planeswalkers, and that's an important, important note. The other thing is, if you have a way of exiling your permanent before it dies, flickering it and having it come back into the field, it'll lose that line of text that says it has to be exiled when it dies, which means then if it dies, it can go back to the graveyard, you can replay it again. You can get around that sort of stipulation. So there's a few different ways we're trying to sort of break this card. Now one is we're using very good permanents that aren't necessarily creatures. We're using Liliana of the Veil, now, Liliana is back in standard. This is an old card that uh, uh, got reprinted in Dominaria United. So this is two black and one for a three loyalty planeswalker. You can uptick to make, make each player discard a card. You can minus two to make target player sacrifice a creature. And then you can minus six to make your opponent separate all of their permanents into two piles. You, actually, you make the piles and then your opponent has to pick one to keep and the other one to sacrifice. Uh, which is super powerful if you can get it off. But what's special about Liliana in this deck, if you're upticking, discarding something, you can just play the thing you discard from the graveyard with Sarah Paragon. So you have some extra value. Also, if you're in a situation where Lily's only got two loyalty left, you can minus two, make them sacrifice a creature, she goes to the grave, you immediately replay her with Sarah Paragon, and then you can do it again. Or uptick, make them discard a card, whatever you want. So tons of value there. The other way to get a lot of value with Sarah Paragon is Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Restoration of Iganjo. Now what's cool about these sagas that flip into creatures on Chapter 3 is when it happens, the exile the saga and return it as a creature line of text overwrites the exile clause from Paragon if you had played it from the graveyard. So if you bring back a Restoration of Iganjo or Fable of the Mirror Breaker from the graveyard uh, with Sarah Paragon, and then it eventually flips into the creature, it'll come back as the creature, and that line of text where it has to be exiled when it dies will be gone. That makes these creature sagas incredibly powerful with Sarah Paragon. Not only that, but Fable of the Mirror Breaker, when it does flip into Reflection of Kikijiki, can for one mana just make a copy of Sarah Paragon and then you can play two things from the graveyard, which is kind of wild. We've also got three extraction specialists to get back a two drop from the graveyard. Restoration of Iganjo also gets back two drops from the graveyard. And why is that important? Because we're running a full play set of selfless samurais. Now, the idea is we get samurai into play. If they kill it, whatever. We get it back with extraction specialists or we discard on chapter two of Restoration of Aganjo and we get it back. We make sure it's in play, we slam the Paragon, now the Samurai can protect the Paragon, and when we sacrifice the Samurai, we can just bring it back again with Paragon, and then we just keep doing it over and over. Now, it does gain the Exile Clause, 
if we bring it back with Paragon, but there's so many other ways to get it back and to gain value that it's it's kind of nutty. We can copy it with Reflection of Kikijiki so that even though the original that's in play has the Exile Clause, we make a copy that's a token, we sack the copy at instant speed, we protect the Paragon, and the original just stays in play. Uh, incredibly powerful. We can also use Touch the Spirit Realm. Now, Touch the Spirit Realm is super cool because, again, if something gets that Exile Clause from coming back with Sarah Paragon, we can channel Touch the Spirit Realm to flicker it. So we can remove that permanent from the battlefield, bring it back into play, and it loses that that uh, that exile clause that it picked up from coming back from the graveyard with Sarah Paragon, which is kind of nutty. We can do things like play the Extraction Specialist to bring back a Selfless Samurai, and then flicker the Extraction Specialist to bring back Selfless Samurai again after we use the Selfless Samurai, and then the Extraction Specialist loses its claws, so then it can die, and then it can be brought back with Sarah Paragon, and it just gets insane. Not only that, we can channel Touch the Spirit Realm to exile Sarah Paragon itself if they target it with removal, like specifically exile removal that we can't protect it from with Selfless Samurai. We can just channel Touch the Spirit Realm, save Sarah Paragon, she'll come back into play at end of turn, and she's ready to go. Not only that, but when we channel this thing, then it's in our graveyard and it's a three drop permanent, which means we can play it from the graveyard as the enchantment itself and use it as removal with Sarah Paragon's ability. It's just there's so much insane value. So the idea is we just always keep a Selfless Samurai on the board. We're using Extraction Specialist, Restoration of Iganjo, etc. with Sarah Paragon to bring all that stuff back and keep it coming. We've also got four copies of Brutal Cathar because we want removal. We want things we can replay at, as three drops with Sarah Paragon. And also, sometimes we can make copies of this as well uh, with, with Reflection of Kikijiki when we just need to remove a blocker for a turn or something that's swinging in at us and we don't want to we don't want to take the damage um on top of all this we've also got four spirited companions because again if we bring it back from the yard we draw cards we create extra advantage uh it's another thing we can copy with reflection of kiki jiki to do that as well and that gets pretty crazy we've got one guardian of new banalia because the main thing with this is you need you need to make sure you always have a two drop to hit with Extraction Specialist and Restoration of Iganjo. Uh, especially Extraction Specialist because it can only hit two drop creatures. Uh, and normally we'd want about eight two drop slots to make sure we consistently hit one on two. But I, I would like a ninth just to make sure we have that buffer so that these cards aren't dead to us. So the one Guardian of New Banali is pretty sick. This is a new card. This is a 2-2 two, two Human Soldier for one white and one. It has Enlist. Whenever it enlists a creature, you scry to, and you can discard a card to give it indestructible until end of turn. This guy actually puts a ton of work in. The scry helps you dig to what you need to find, sometimes the paragon. Um, you can enlist things that you wouldn't want to swing with. Like, if you don't want to risk your selfless samurai dying, you can enlist it to add two power to the Guardian of New Banalia. If you don't want your brutal Cathar dying because it exiled a creature that you don't want to get back, you can enlist it. Things like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then giving it indestructible by discarding a card just fits into the themes of the deck we already have because we want things in the yard because we can just bring them back with Sarah Paragon or any number of other things. So that gets crazy. We've also got two copies of Weatherlight completed in this deck. I actually think this card is really good and underrated. Uh, the best use is Sweeper Protection. So this is a 2-2 Legendary Vehicle. It's an artifact. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five flyer, has no crew cost. Whenever a creature of yours dies, including token creatures, you put a Phyresis counter on it, and you scry one. Once it has four Phyresis counters on it, it becomes a 5-5 five, five flying creature. It doesn't need to be crewed, and then it's just a creature as long as it has four or more counters on it for the rest of the game. Uh, once you hit seven counters, you draw a card, and every time a creature dies after that, you draw a card. So... What's really cool about Weatherlight is things are constantly shuffling in and out of the graveyard in this deck, and we're building up counters, but if we get to two, three counters, or even no counters, and they play a sweeper spell, like Meat Hook Massacre, like, yeah, maybe they wipe our board, but we get, like, 
seven, eight, nine counters on whether light completed, we get to scry a bunch of times, make sure we draw our, our perfect answer or the perfect card we need to recover from the sweep, while also drawing a bunch of cards and turning this into a 5-5 five, five flyer that can then swing at them for five while they're tapped out and have no board. So that seems insane. Not only that, but if it dies, we can just get it back with Sarah Paragon, or we can just bring it back into play with Chapter 2 of Restoration of Iganjo, which also gets crazy. Uh, the last card in this deck we've got is Rite of Oblivion, because there are just there are some things we can't kill that we really need to kill. Um, certain permanents that we can't hit with the Brutal Cathar or the Touch the Spirit Realm, and being able to just, just have two copies of this, um, because we always have things we don't mind sacking, putting in the graveyard to bring back, seems pretty good. Being able to flash it back to exile a, se a second permanent is also really good. So two copies of this fits perfectly into the deck. It shores up our defenses against things we're weak against. Uh, if we go over to the mana base, we've got four planes. Because we need just enough for the restoration of Iganjo to find. Um, and then we've got one Iganjo, one Takanuma. Because the channel lands are actually super good in this deck. Because you can channel them for the ability and then play them out of the graveyard with Sarah Paragon, which is really cool. We've got four Shattered Sanctums, four Sundown Pass, just one Haunted Ridge, four Selfurus Springs, which is one of the uh, the new reprinted Pain Lands in Dominari United, just one Caves of Koilos, and then one Thrawn Portal. This makes for exactly 21 lands. Uh, which is what we need to hit three mana on turn three consistently. But then we've got the four Spirited Companions and the three Restoration of Iganjos to make sure we can get to four and five and, and, and get the rest of our land drops settled. Uh, so that's the deck. It's pretty crazy. I completely forgot to mention Spirit Sisters Call. So we have Spirit Sisters Call in there too. So if Sarah Paragon dies by chance, we can just sacrifice one of our other little dudes to bring it back with Spirit Sisters Call and keep doing it that way. Crazy. We got some crazy games. This is probably the longest deck tech video I've ever made just because uh, the, the first game's super short, but game two and game three are just absolutely freaking insane. And they're games that any other deck and put, put in the position we were put in would have just folded under the pressure. And we just play the value game against some of the most value infused decks in the format and we still come out on top so make sure to check those games out and uh we'll catch you on the other side uh we'll keep seven our opponent is mulliganing mulliganing decides to mulligan decides to mulligan leave the planes I think we play Weatherlight on two, to be honest. Weatherlight on two. So we can make sure we're getting all the value right away. Seems fine. Restoration of Iganjo. Grab a planes. Feels pretty good to me. Etching. Gonna smash in. What else? What there's the adversary. Hits for five. That's not so bad. You may discard a card. Discard you. And put you into play to ramp us. And then we'll put you into play. And then we'll put you into play. And then we'll put you into play. Seems fine. Play with fire. No, you 
will not scry. I will scry. The land. We do not care for the land. There will be no scrying. Unless we're scrying. Trepid adversary. Sure. Doesn't have haste, so... Cancel. Pass the blockers. Block here. <sighs> What's the right play? We could discard Spirit Sister's Call right now and save it. Or we could play Spirit Sister's Call and get it back. No, that's going to take too much mana. We're going to do it like this. Another Weatherlight. Oh boy. At least we have something to discard. What do we dump? Honestly, we're dumping this. Because we don't want our stuff getting exiled. No attack. End turn. We have very good blockers. We can discard the extra Weatherlight to Guardian. I think we should be playing four weather likes. We can discard them to Guardian, we can discard them to Fable. Any extras? Come at me. Make a decision. Sure. Do we go down to three? Can we gain life next turn? I think we do it like this. And then we activate you, submit you. Yes, our brutal Kathar dies, but I think it's worth it. We do get an extra trigger on Weatherlight because of it. And we're still at six. Play Restoration, grab our last planes. with this guy and list this one oh boy so if we play that and then we play selfless samurai from our yard that seems really good let's uh yeah let's do that so, hopefully, we can hold on to this planes. That's the hope. We've got two blockers. So, I think we'll be okay. Wandering Emperor. The Exiled Guardian, that's kind of okay at this point. He did his job. You'll be safer. Did your job, bro. Sure. This is what you get for hurting my What now? Swings with this guy. Do we block with the architect? No. Not this turn. We can make an extra token by swinging with it. So we'll just do that. Pop Weatherlight up to three. May discard a card. And put a two drop. 
I mean... Sure. Actually, now that I think about it, I would rather get Samurai into play this way so it doesn't have the Exile Clause. And then we can do that. And then we can play the land from the yard. And then we can swing at Wandering Emperor with just the Architect to make another token. And now whenever we want, we can sacrifice Selfless Samurai to turn the Weatherlight into a 5-5 Flyer if we want to. Or if we just block stuff, it'll happen. Sure. He's going to get us to three just by pinging, so we have to kill the Raiju. The most important thing, past the blockers, is that we kill the Raiju. So we'll do it like that. We'll see how he lines it up, and then we'll sack the Samurai to protect our Paragon if he tries to kill the Paragon. Uh, yeah, that makes sense to me. Weather light becomes a five-five. We top deck our removal. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You can swing for a lot. We can swing for a real lot. Um, bring back the samurai. Touch the spirit realm. This fool. Swing with everything. Get him to six. And he's just got an etching and we're at four. I think that's probably game. Resolve. Buffs everything up. Yeah, you shall not pass. We'll keep this alive. Trigger our weather light. Get another scry. Selfless savior on top. All right then. That's a game. This is great. This is a perfect hand. Having two land would normally be kind of worrisome, but because we have the companion and the restoration of Ikanjo, I actually think it's fine. Alright, Sundown Pass. Turn 2, we'll sell for Springs. Since we do have our land, we'll probably play Selfless Samurai. If it survives, we can swing in for 2 and gain 2 with the lifelink. Which is not nothing. Come on. Let me do my thing. Let me do my thing. Selfless Samurai. He's a good boy. He's a fox. When I win, you're telling me what you make. Alright, makes us sack. <gasps> it's not the worst. Must be made. whole bunch of Lilianas. Do we Restoration or do we Fable? I think we Fable. If we Fable and it survives, we can swing, make a treasure, play Restoration, get a land, play the land, and then spend the two mana to play Spirited Companion. If we do it the other way around and we Restoration first, we don't have that play line open to us. 
we have four mana available next turn and can still only play one thing. Uh, we will discard our second Liliana. Don't worry, it will be coming back. Plays Voldaren Epicure, turns the blood token into a dude. Discard up to two cards. One of the Brutal Cathars. We don't have a second black. Let's just discard the other Liliana. It's fine. It is fine. Play the planes. Play the planes. Swing at Liliana. Force him to trade both of his dudes. Or just chump block. That's fine too. Spirit of Companion. Draw a card. We are in good shape. We have more cards in hand than him. Both of these looking to flip relatively soon. We can get back to Selfless Samurai with Chapter 2 of Restoration of Iganjo. Each player discards a card. Well, what's our play next turn? I guess we'll discard the Spirited Companion. Since it's possible we get back two two drops next turn. One through Restoration, one through Paragon if we get the treasure off the two two. He loses his only artifact unless he sacks it now and lets us keep our companion. So that's a pretty good play. Alright, so that flips. That has us discard. What do we want? Discard Haunted Ridge. We bring back Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Play Shattered Sanctum. Swing here. Make a treasure. So his artifact is gone now. We play Paragon. We've got an extra mana. So we play Samurai from the Yard. And end the turn. All is well with the world. We have a pretty crazy board state. You can meet Hook. But we've got Spirit Sisters call in hand, so... I think a meat Hook is okay. We'll do that first so he gains one less life. We've got this guy set to flip, so we'll have some recovery already. Discard Brutal Cathar. Brutal, brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar. Problem is, now he can minus two make us sack our only creature in play, which is a problem. So what we'll need to do is be very clever. How do we be very clever? We go Spirit Sisters Call, uh, pass the turn. We bring back. We can't bring back our Sarah Paragon yet. We 
bring back Fable. So that we have a creature on the board. But we've also got extra value still lingering. And if he does down tick, he removes the ability to down tick and hit our paragon. Which is important. We kept the Thrawn portal in our hands so we can discard it to chapter 2. Comes in with the tenacious underdog. I don't mind taking 3 here. He just needs to draw a card, I'm pretty sure. So, I'll take another point. From Meat Hook, he'll draw a card. Don't we get rid of the Thrawn things. Portal. That's fine. Alright, we're in a pretty good position here. Pretty good position. Uh, decline. We're going to play this out. We're going to swing at Lily. He's going to block. Do we want an enchantment or a creature back? not really safe to bring back the Paragon, is it? Well, he's only got one card in hand, so... Maybe we can just pick the Paragon and hope that he doesn't have what he needs. I mean, if he down ticks, we sack the 2-2, right? We still... Oh, no, because it's end step. We can't play anything. So if he down ticks Lily, we sack the 2-2. If he's got removal in hand, we can just sack the 2-2 next turn and bring Paragon back again with Spirit Sister's Call. Which is fine, I think. Tokenson. Uh, Drop it. Wow, he really wants that loyalty, huh? Can't kill the Paragon. So, I think that's just game. I am not discarding my Weather Light, thank you very much. Decline. We will play the weather light. And then... We play Liliana. With the Paragon. We down tick, Nobody target him, make him sack one of his 1-1s. One <laughs> then, we smash everything at Lily. And if he wants to save Lily, he has to block with his 1-1. One one. He does. We still get it away from its, uh, its ultimate. And then... What do we sacrifice to bring something back? 
Probably a creature. So we'll grab a uh, spirited companion. We'll sack this guy. We'll draw a card. We'll get a counter on Weatherlight. We'll keep that on top. That looks fine. Paragon is a little bit susceptible to spot removal right now, but our board state is so crazy, I don't think it matters. Hmm. We don't want him to down tick. We'll take it. We got big plans next turn. If he minus twos the Liliana, we would have to sack one of these, which would be bad. So we need to keep the Spirited Companion here to uh, deal with the Liliana. Makes me discard my Extraction Don't Specialist. Think things. That's fine. Watch how insane this turn is going to be. Specialist, bring back Spirited Companion, draw a card, uptick Lily, both players discard, we discard ourselves for a spring, then we restoration of Iganjo. So if he does wipe the board, we've got things left. Grab another planes. Uh, then we'll swing. We'll go three here, three here, one here. I think we got him. We could get a little Nothing bit lucky. More. Oh right, we still get to do this. Um, do we want Brutal Kithar? No. I guess we just... I guess we just bring back Lily. And get rid of the other Lily. Give him two life. We're exiling. That helps. Trigger Weatherlight by our token copy of Sarah Paragon. Uh, dying. We've got Touch the Spirit Realm on top. This game is wild. This game is so wild. Bolted Surge, the Extraction Specialist. We get another counter. On Weatherlight completed. We're still gonna keep touch the spirit realm there. Place that tenacious underdog. We take zero chance. We'll just let our companion die. We'll turn on our Weatherlight. We'll still keep touch the spirit realm there. Now it's a 5 5 flyer. Three, one, two. Yeah, we got him. We could make three Sarah Paragons. This hand looks good. We'll keep it. We'll lead with uh, Shattered Sanctum. Sulfurous Springs into Selfless Samurai. 
Looks like we're playing against a five color domain deck. Maybe it's five color enchantments. Let's see. I think Liliana is the right play here. Take one. We get rid of the companion. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch oh, look my at home. this little bear. Just what chilling in the wrong spot. Go home, bear. You're drunk. Gain some life. We've got a Liliana on the board. Feels good. Plays another spirited companion. Well then. I think we go... Brutal Cathar. And then we uh, uptick. Discard Selfress Springs. So I don't think we'll need it. We're going to grab another land with Restoration of Iganjo next turn, most likely. Discards Aspara's Headquarters. Swing two, gain two. End the turn. It's going to meet hook for two. That's fine. Uh, we'll sack this first so he gains one less life. Still have Lily, so it's not the end of the world. How do we want to do this? I think we need the land, no matter what. But if that's the case, what do we discard? Maybe right? So we'll grab the planes, slam the planes, we will uptick, discard right, we can still play it, it's just going to take up our whole turn, if we decide to. Leyline binding, okay, that's fine, Sorry, we write of oblivion to Leyline binding. Dying. And then we minus two to get rid of the Spirited Companion. Oh. We've got a thing. We have any Selfless Samurai we can get back. If we discard something else. Yeah, we'll discard Guardian. Bring back Selfless Samurai. Play another Lily. Or, hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll pick, play it. Counter spell. Okay. Five color control with counter spells. Did not expect that. I think this is a Zer deck. That splashing green and red for domain stuff like Leyline Binding. Hello. Nice. It's got a lot of cards in hand. That's the big issue. We want to make sure we hit the binding and get back our Liliana because we need to make up our, our value. Artifact or creature. Do we kill both of his tokens?
think. I don't love this, but I think it's the right play. Target Leyline Binding with the Samurai. Right of Oblivion, that boy. Get back, Lily. And then we Nobody minus two to sack. Like Get rid of one of his dudes. <laughs> Off you go. And then next turn we can get rid of whatever threat he plays to try to avoid Lily's uptick, and then we uptick because we're out of cards. Should be fine. This deck's pretty wild though. There's a Wandering Emperor. Can't kill anything, just makes a 2 2. I don't know why he wouldn't have waited and played that at instant speed. So we'll do it like this. Grab this. Play this. We can hit an artifact or creature. And we will. Smack this guy. Plus one. Make him discard. You won't be outsmarting me. And then we'll swing at the Wandering Emperor with a Vigilance, dude. Make a 1-1. One, one. He'll chump it. And then we're pretty safe. He's got to play out his hand or we just eat it away with Lily. If he gets lucky and draws the right answer he can just deal with Lily right now it's just fine good old death touch we just trade the one one for it that's fine sure plus one plus one counter Lifelink, Hexproof, First Strike, Jesus Christ. All of the things. We'll just chump here. Doesn't have Trample. Does gain a good amount of life. He's back up to 20. You may discard a card to get a 2 drop into play. Sure. Might as well. We're still gonna pick the companion, but now we don't have to pay for it. Play another companion. Play a selfless samurai. Uptick. Get rid of, rid of his last creature. Drop it. Swing at the wandering emperor. Uh, sure. Doesn't have death touch. It's fine. Alright, and it is 20 to 20. <laughs> and we've both got board states. This is a very interesting game. Trans Damascus Gal. Somebody likes Final Fantasy 12. Or Tactics. I think Damascus is from Tactics. Creates a 2-2. Two, two. Guards, to me. Play line binding. Okay, that's gonna cause a problem for us. Unfortunately. <sighs> Knew this was a waste of time. Pass. the blockers. Let me think. We're gonna do it this way. He's 
sack this. Keep our architect alive. Kill his wedding festivity. We lose, we lose some boys, but it is what it is. We are touching the spirit realm. Let's go. Grab Zer. Okay, they are six sixes until end of turn. Oh no, it's forever, right? I think that's forever. No tax. Okay. Game on. Game on. That's actually really cool. That makes her way better. I was thinking once he's gone, the enchantments revert. That's not the case. Just slam restoration here. Grab our last planes. We're gonna keep it in our hand so that we have something to discard to it on turn two. Uh, can't really do anything yet. Pass. We need to be able to block. If we get this selfless samurai back into play, then we've got a chance. Because we can kind of mess up his blocks. He's got another wedding announcement. Dude, this game is crazy. Plus one, plus one counter on the Meat Hook Massacre. First strike. Swings with just the Spirited Companion and the other guy. But why? He's out of mana. Yes, he just wants to draw a card. But, I mean, we'll make tokens, so I'm fine with that. Make tokens, we'll go down to 17. Um, we'll dump the Sulphur Springs. We'll get back. Samurai. <sighs> Kinda sucks, but... Do this. It's gonna have to lose... something. It's got three blockers. Let's do this. Because we make two more and we have the samurai to keep our architect alive. Do that. Really nice if we had a weather light in play. Alright. So the Wandering Emperor's toast. End the turn. We can still block the 6-6 six, six if we need to. If he attacks with only the 6-6, six, six, we block with both architects. We kill it. We make two more 1-1s. One we get to keep one architect. This is about to flip into another one. If he attacks with everything, we just get to eat the Meat Hook Massacre and the Samurai. And make two tokens. And then chump block the Leyline Binding. Which seems fine to me. Can't get through with the architects, so... We just gotta hold out for now. Pass the turn. We'll get to cycle some stuff away with Fable next turn. That won't be so bad. Just kind of in a stalemate right now. Beside you! Uh-oh. That's not good. 
now we got some problems. Death touch is a problem. Just those guys. Wants to trigger the wedding announcement. Draw a card. And I mean... We'll make more 1-1s one if that's the case. We'll go down to 15, but whatever. Could you imagine if we had a meat hook right now? My goodness. It's going to like Ganjo that one. That's fine. That's a card. We cycle away our two lands. Sarah Paragon, bring back a two drop. Should be what? Selfless Samurai, I guess? Dude, what a fucking insane game. Gotta protect our Paragon. So we play this out. Pass the turn. His enchantments are too strong, so we can't. Alright, resolve that. We can't just swing in willy nilly. We gotta be ready. We gotta be ready to go. What do we have in here? Liliana, Brutal Cathar, more Selfless Samurais, Temporary Lockdown! Massacre, though. Play Spirited Companion. Is he gonna swing? Doesn't seem it. We could touch the Spirit Realm. We could Brutal Cathar. One, two, three. One, two. So I think what we do is we play. Do we play land? I'm trying to think how we get the most value here. Uh, let's see. We've got one, just one selfless samurai. So we'll go Extraction Specialist. What you got? Make Disappear. Fine. That's fine. Uh, we'll then play it from our yard. <laughs> With Sarah Paragon. And get a selfless samurai. Next. Can we swing? No, we just end up wasting our selfless samurai. No attacks. Not this turn, unfortunately. But next turn, we can exile something with a Brutal Cathar. And play Weatherlight. And possibly something else. has some kind of removal. Oh, 
Wandering Emperor. Hmm. We let it in. Run away. You'll be plus safer. one, plus one, first strike. Do we save one of our architects? Not sure. Remember your training. First strike is brutal. That might actually cost us the game. We keep our Sarah Paragon value engine going, so maybe not. My turn. All right, motherfucker. It's time to dance. Touch the spirit realm. Zer. Get rid of hexproof. Sure. We have a two drop we want to play. No. Uh, cancel. Play weather light. <sighs> Swing here with a flyer. Get the Wandering Emperor to 1. End the turn. We're holding up Reflection at Kikijiki because we can make a copy of a Selfless Samurai. Or a Paragon, or whatever else we want to. What's under this? Just Meat Hook. And then my Lily's under that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven. Resolve. I have got new moves to teach you. Blockers. Two blockers. Sack this one to protect that one. Get a counter on Weatherlight. Let's see what he does. Get a counter what? Selfless Savior trigger? That's the case, we sack this one to keep the Paragon alive. And all is right with the world. Do we want the Fable? I don't think we need the Fable right now. Bottom that. So our Paragon is alive. Oh boy. What do we do now? We need to get rid of his board. Board, 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 board. Board. Just the board. Just get rid of the board. We'll go... Brutal Cathar. Leyline Binding. When I win, we'll go... Spirited Companion. Draw a card. Play Sundown Pass. We will... Am I more worried about what's in his hand? I think I'm more worried about what's in his hand. We're in discard cards. I'm gonna discard a land. Let's 
Next to combat, we're gonna swing this boy. End the turn. So we hold up reflection. We can actually make a copy of Brutal Cathar at instant speed to just stop something from attacking us. Uh, it'll come back into play, but not as a creature. Go like that. And then we'll go like that. Seems pretty powerful, to be honest. Uh, we'll bottom the land. I think we got it, guys. I think we got our value. Strong cards, though. Oh my god, we got a Spirit Sisters call. Um, do we have any Selfless? We do have Selfless. So, first thing we do, we play Selfless Samurai. Then, we will make a copy of Sarah Paragon. Then, we will... Minus two, this fool. Get rid of the temp temporary lockdown. Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Resolve. Then we will set ourselves up for if he wipes the board. So we'll play a land. We'll play the Spirit Sisters Call. And we'll start whittling down his life. End the turn. Spirit Sisters Call. We want to get a creature back. That creature is going to be a Spirited Companion. We're going to sack the Paragon that's going to die anyway. It's all the reflexes. It definitely is. Get another counter on the Weatherlight. Keep touch the Spirit Realm. Pass the end of the turn. He needs a Meat Hook. Sarah Paragon, that's not bad. I don't know if it's going to be enough. But it's not bad. Sack this. Keep... Let's see, Sarah Paragon alive. Scry. Into a Brutal Cathar, that looks fine to me. Locks down some of our bullshit. All right, do we have a way of? Say we take off, nuke the site from orbit. I agree. It's the only way to be sure. Do we have a way of destroying an enchantment? I don't think we do. So, we're going to start by Spirited Companioning. There we go, Rite of Oblivion. One, one, two, that would leave us with three. One, two, one, two, one. Draw another card. Play a land. Right of Oblivion. Target the lockdown. Sacrifice the 1 1. Get a whole bunch of draws. Uh, then. Touch the Spirit Realm. Sarah Paragon. Then uptick, make him discard a card. We'll get rid of Guardian. It. 
And we'll swing with Sarah Paragon for three. Pass the turn. Bring something back. What do we want? Uh, Sack this guy. It's got nothing under it. To bring back an enchantment. That's what we want to do. So we'll target Restoration of Iganjo. Sack this guy. And then at some point, we'll be able to bring that guy back as well. Jesus. This game is cray cray. Swings with his dudes so that he can draw cards. Block one here. We'll eat one there. Bottom the land. Weather light is back. Does he have more removal? He's drawing. He's down to 21 cards. We've got another Sarah Paragon. We discard the weather light. And then we get back. I guess probably a spirited companion. Alright, we'll play the land from our hand. Uh do we just fucking smash? Let's uptick. Discard our brutal Cathar, because we don't I'm need it. Tired of your secrets. Uh we'll swing. Eleven. And then we'll go. Restoration of Iganjo with you. They're the best thing to play if we don't need anything in particular, because when they flip, they lose the Exile Clause. Which means we can just keep playing them over and over and over. Alright, we'll end the turn. We will bring... I don't know, man. We'll bring uh, a guardian into play. We'll sack a spirited companion that we can get back. So we trigger weather light, and it's in the yard for us to get back later. We're keeping touch the spirit realm in our hand because we can channel something if it's going to die to like another meat hook or a temporary lockdown. Hey, there's our selfless samurai. That's what we want. That dies, we get another trigger. We're still keeping the samurai there. Pass to end the turn. Three. Six. Playline binding. What would you like to hit? What would you like to hit? He doesn't even know. Paragon? Nope. Get out of here. Get out of here. We save it. It'll come back at the end of his turn, so we can't even kill it. And we got another one in hand. He doesn't even know. Another one. Alright. He hits the Brutal Cathar. So that he can lay line binding. But we have a Rite of Oblivion. Sitting in our yard. So we just get it all back. Sure. 
sure. Sure. Makes an 8-8. Eight, eight. into a dude that is pretty strong I'm not gonna lie unfortunately that one has summoning sickness a little block here we'll discard a Seraparadon got a spirit sister's call so we can just get it back discard the samurai to bring in the samurai Alright, we gotta kill a bunch of shit. Whole bunch of shit. First, we will uptick to make him discard since we have nothing in hand. You won't be outsmarting me. Then, we got a Rite of Oblivion. His thingy. This, sack, this guy. Bottom that. And then we'll hit there. And then we'll go touch the spirit realm. Cast with you, submit, hit this boy, get another one, hit this boy. Then we have one more thing we can play from the yard. So we'll go Shattered Sanctum and this guy just to get the scry. Selfless Samurai on top, that seems fine. Smash, 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 smash. End the turn. We will sack the creature to bring back an act. Eh. If he wipes the board we want to kind of save ourselves. So I think we sack this Sarah Paragon in order to Spirited Companion. Draw the Samurai. Just in case. Cycles. I think it's game over. Plays a thing. My turn. We got him. Overwhelming value. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. Uh, we are pushing hard for that 1,000 subscriber mark, so please consider subscribing. Hit that button. There's a circle in the middle over there. Hit that. Subscribe. Tell all your friends to do it. Thank you. Also, give this video a like so more people can see it. If you'd like more PlayStation and console game coverage, we've got that down below. 
And if you'd like more Magic the Gathering coverage, there's more of that somewhere off over that way. Do all the things.